a streamside acquisition program piloted in Schoharie County is being proposed by New York City DEP as part of its land acquisition program to protect water quality. Delaware County government objects to the implementation of the new program, as does the Delaware County Chamber of Commerce and Industrial Development Agency. On this segment of Delco 360 Local Matters, we're taking a look at an issue that's really be, is going to be critical to our uh, future economy here in Delaware County, and that's the land acquisition program and specifically the Streamside acquisition program. And, and joining me here to talk about this is Nick Carbone. Nick is the uh, coordinator for the Watershed Affairs here in Delaware County, and Jim Thompson, who's the chairman of Delaware County Industrial Development Agency and Local Development Corporation. Gentlemen, thank you both for joining me here on Delco 360. Nick, let's start with you. Let's let's give us some context of what we're looking at. Land acquisition has been with us for almost 30 years here in the in the Catskills. Uh, this is a new development within that acquisition program. This program that we're talking about today is the Streamside Acquisition Program. It's um it's a it's a, a form of the land acquisition program but it was uh, put together prior to the 2010 uh, water supply permit that's issued by the DEC to New York City DEP. Um, this new program will waive some of the uh, limitations that were within the core land acquisition program. Uh, it's going to affect parcels less than 10 acres in size and the potential exists to uh, impact villages, hamlets, and extended hamlet areas. So. These, the parcels that were excluded prior in the core land acquisition program are now available for purchase if this program goes through. So we're talking about the city being able to, essentially the city being able to purchase parcels that are less than, than 10 acres in size um, within the hamlets, outside the hamlets, in our extension areas, in the villages, uh, in the towns. This this creates a whole new ball game for for possible acquisition and further reducing the amount of land that we have developable. Is that a fair statement? Yes, it is. And the thing that we have to be concerned with is uh, if the villages, hamlets, and the hamlet extension areas decide to opt in, that means that all those parcels that we've been protecting as areas that could be developed in the future here in this county will be vulnerable and open to solicitation. So it's I feel like it's going to be important for us to make sure that these towns are well informed, towns, villages, and hamlets, so that these they choose not to opt in and make all these parcels vulnerable. Outside of those areas, outside of the municipalities, uh, in the towns themselves, we don't have any control. So the potential exists that hundreds and hundreds of acres on every stream corridor in Delaware County would have the potential to be solicited for purchase through the SAP program. So let's take let's make this local. Uh, if the town board in Delhi were to say we're not opting in this program, uh, that would apply to those designated hamlet areas only, like Frasers as an example. Um, but would that decision by the town board would have no impact of for areas outside those hamlet exactly. settings. They would all be, all those parcels would be fair game. Uh, some preliminary work that was done by our GIS, GIS specialist at the County Planning Department looked at uh, on a town by town basis, looked at parcels that might be, uh, would be available for purchase if it met the criteria. It's called surface water criteria, SWC. Um, that is ponds, lakes, wetlands, streams, and intermittent streams. So if any of those uh, criteria are met, those parcels would be available for purchase by DEP. Nick, what's intermittent stream? What are you talking about? It's a classification of stream that doesn't flow year round, but um, there's a certain period of time in the year where it could be flowing. So, so it could just be winter runoff. It could it could run for uh, a month in the spring and then dry up the rest of the year, but it would be, that's an intermittent stream. Jim, this sounds like the impact could be significant for for all of us, and particularly for the possibility of economic expansion here in the county. Is that it's 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 far beyond what we're faced with now, and and let's not forget that right now, 
uh, in in Delaware County, New York New York City DEP has purchased or has con under control through Watershed Ag Council, 28% uh, of the acreage in Delaware County, which translates into around 150,000 acres. If you if 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 that'll give you a, a visual. Um, this this is serious stuff because we can't uh, you can't you can't put a any any business at all on that hundred and fifty thousand acres that's a big hole in the Delaware County economy. This is going to by far uh, exceed that hundred and fifty thousand acres. So right now it's at twenty eight percent. This is this removes those those restrictions. We could very easily be looking at forty fifty sixty. Right. Percent? And and uh, my my question at this point is how much is enough? Uh, they they already control almost thirty percent of our land. Uh, isn't isn't that enough? Uh, and their water quality is fine, and they they talk about the the high quality of their drinking water. So it's it's to the point where it's not about water quality anymore. This is simply about open spaces, and and land grab. It's a total land grab, and and if you if you look back in the documents uh, that were that were filed, the original memorandum of agreement mm -hmm. and so forth, you'll see all through that document you'll see the the term partnership, and this whole thing is the success of this whole uh, MOA is built on a partnership. Well, DEC and, and the Catskill Center for Conservation and Development, who are doing a solicitation <clears throat> as part of this program, are, are working together, and they have the two of them have literally declared that the partnership is null and void. Uh, that's a serious, serious problem, and a serious breach of the at least the spirit of exactly. of, of that uh, agreement. Exactly. The you know let's let's. Let's, if we can, and Nick, probably you're in a better position to talk about this. Um, let's let's apply some numbers to to what we're talking about. Um, we're on Delhi telephone uh, cable system, and so a lot of folks who are watching us are are going to are in or around the town of Delhi, um, in the village of Delhi. How many? How much? Or the extension area for the village of Delhi. How much, what percentage? Do you know what percentage we're talking about that uh, could now be open to acquisition? 60, uh, 60 to 70% of the village parcels. Think about any parcel that has stream bank that's attached to it. That's the majority of parcels. You, uh, you have the, the main stem here and you have all these intersecting tributaries. Yeah. All, every, almost every lot, it, we looked at 60 to 70% of the lots would be impacted or could be potentially impacted. That's in the hamlet areas and the village areas. Now, outside of that, uh, you, you know, that I'd say there's a myriad of streams out there and they're sure. all, any parcel that has a little bit of that stream frontage on it would be eligible. So, so just trying to make sure that, you know, we really present a picture of what the impact is going to be. And the village of Delhi is already uh, set, majority of the, of the acreage is already tax exempt. Um, these these parcels, um, and we'll talk about subdivision in a moment. But the so these parcels then go off the tax rolls, or the parcels of those tax parcels. The, they'll still be taxes paid on those parcels. The tax those they'll still be taxed. Um, that that isn't really the most concern to me anyway. That there's going to be tax, but what I, what I see the biggest issue is. Currently, there's a program set up for any parcels that want to be put uh, for sale by the landowners have to wait till every five-year period. There's a five-year period where okay. they can bring they can bring these to the town boards and uh, open their parcels up for solicitation. There's no provisions for that in this SAP program, so that means that these town boards will be faced with could be on a monthly basis landowners trying to, if they want to sell their property petitioning the town boards. So can you imagine being on a town board and having to face what it's done is going to pit landowners against the municipal representatives and that's a difficult situation to be in. Now, some of these parcels that would be created, because the city isn't going to be interested in the entire, the parcel in its entirety, 
they're going to be interested in in a certain area within and around that that waterway. Right. Um, so you're going to be creating a situation, perhaps or very likely, where you have non-conforming parcels. Is that going to be permitted? Well, this is the problem. It's going to take a change in some subdivision law, and the villages and uh, towns will have to accept those. They'll have to be. They'll have to accept those by resolution. Those changes in the subdivision law, and if you do end up with two non-conforming parcels. Uh, that goes. That flies right in the face of all zoning, zoning and uh, and land use regulations in any town. So if you allow the DEP to do that via through the third party of the Catskill Center, um, you're going to have to allow everyone to do that. So that's so we're really losing out. local control, <laughs> losing local control, and some orderly system of lot development. Now, Jim, one of the hamlets around Delhi. Uh, Hamlet designations is Frasers, right. and in Frasers we have <clears throat> Domo, we have Saputo, uh, we have sports field specialties in, in that area, um, and Clark companies. And Clark companies. Um, <clears throat> what are going to be those restrictions if you know we have, and that runs right along the West Branch of the Delaware? So well, if some they, of that land disappears. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, that that means no further economic growth. Um, they they've already calculated that if this program goes into effect as presented, that 91% of the acreage in the, in the hamlet of Fraser is subject to, to land acquisition. So that means that New York City is going to be battling to buy as much of the land as, as possible. And that's our industrial growth. That's where all of our jobs are in the village of Delhi. The, the other thing that, that, that we need to think about is that when New York City buys a piece of property, <clears throat> they immediately file a an easement on the pro on the property uh -huh. for DEC. The DEC easement does That's not. That's New York State Department <clears throat> of Environmental <clears throat> Conservation. Right. Our our friendly government um, takes control of that property via an easement, and that easement forbids any utilities on or above or underneath that piece of property. So if you have a piece of property on the other side of the river mm -hmm. and you sell your river frontage and the and the and this easement gets put in place, if you want to run an electrical power line in the air just of, a utility uh, line. That's what we're talking a about. A utility line across that river frontage, you can't do it. You can't run a you can't run a water supply line across that river. You can you can ironically run a sewer line across that <laughs> river, <clears throat> but that, that, that which I think is a little self serving. But uh, but that that means that that piece of property is totally useless. So guys, how did we get how did we get here? How who let <clears throat> this who let well, this happen? What happened to all those? those safeguards that we were supposed to have in place that things well, like this didn't happen. I could say that, you know, this, the negotiation for this program took place prior to 2010 because it was included in the water supply permit, DEC's water permit, supply permit. But what had happened is during that time period, especially in Delaware County, there was thousands of acres being bought through the core land acquisition program. So when it was brought out that there may be some program, this riparian buffer program, which would concentrate on smaller, uh, parcels and a more focused land acquisition program that sounded appealing to people. But Delaware County's position has been all along that uh, they didn't want to have to change subdivision law. They wanted a program that would mirror this conservation reserve program that's been going on here with the uh, USDA and uh, uh, since uh, I think about 1999 here in this county. That CREP program lets the land stay with the landowner the landowner continues to pay tax. They get a uh, annual rental agreement. They maintain it. They maintain it. There's money available for stewardship, tree planting, uh -huh. whatever. That CRP, uh, CREP, which the E stands for enhanced, meaning that 100% of it was paid for, that focused on ag land. But the, I don't see any reason. <clears throat> there is no reason it couldn't focus on lands outside of agricultural land. Land is land, right? So. That's been that's been the position all along. There was several resolutions that were passed in 2018 that stated that unless 
the towns would have control over whether this program was expanded or not and have some control over whether parcels could be purchased in that town. Delaware County didn't want anything to do with it. And that's been their, their stance all along. And I noticed that in the last meeting of the Board of Supervisors, um, Tom Snow said that, well, Delaware County was present during the stakeholders meetings and, and wanted this program, but with the caveats that the towns wouldn't have to accept it if they didn't want to. And that it would be a program that mirrored CREP. And the third caveat was that if that was going to take place, this riparian buffer program, that the core land acquisition program would be eliminated. And none of those things have been proposed. Jim, we're supposed to have safeguards in place. I understand well, how the, <clears throat> how we got there with the process. Frankly, when uh, going back in history again uh, with the MOA in 1977, uh, that mandated that that we form the Ketsco Watershed Corporation and <clears throat> that that we have the the um, a coalition of watershed towns. The Catskill Watershed Corporation was was put in place to administer septic system programs and economic development programs and storm water and, storm and all those kind of issues. Yeah. The the water the the coalition of watershed towns was put in place to protect those of us that live in the watershed, and frankly, they haven't been doing their job. Um, and it's it's time that that they that they change the way of, of doing business and go in a different direction. They're the ones that can and should be speaking out to protect us from this kind of a violation of that partnership from right. happening. And obviously, at this point, to date, that part hasn't happened. Exactly. So, gentlemen, and maybe Jim, maybe this is more to your to you. But what do we do? How, well, <laughs> maybe <laughs> it's TV. We're being kind here. Um, what's the next step? How do we? How do those of us, you know, those who are watching, um, how are we able to affect some change? What steps do we take? Well, I think first and foremost, uh, we we all need to reach out to our elected officials. And we need to talk first. Firstly, we have to talk to our uh, Delaware County, uh, our town supervisors uh -huh. and those that sit on the Delaware County Board. Those people at the Delaware County Board level are the ones that nominate the board members of the Coalition of Watershed Towns. Okay. And we need to pressure them and talk to them about getting some people that are going to be serious about protecting those of us that live in the watershed. That's what the charter of the of the water of the coalition watershed right. towns is. Um, number two, I think that that it's important that we uh, contact and and work with our state elected representatives, our state senators, so, or our assembly the, representatives. Delaware County is in a position. We have three uh, state assembly districts mm -hmm. in Delaware County, and we have three senate districts yep. in Delaware County. That's a lot of votes and uh, and a lot of a lot of people in, in representing a small rural county like us we need to talk to those people i'm i'm convinced that they aren't even they don't even have a clue that this is going on dc is flying under the radar with this thing in conjunction with the catskill center and i think it's time that we have to raise the awareness level with all of our elected officials about the activities both of Maybe not all of DEC, but at least some subset of DEC yeah. staff. Yeah. May not the folks at the upper level, commissioner level, and the like may not even be aware of what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, making sure that that those folks at DEC know that I mean, the folks, our elected officials know what DEC is up to, and frankly, what the Catskill Center is up to right now, mm -hmm. operating hand in glove, and and with that glove strangling us and and our economic future. Well, the, the, a determination needs to be made. This is part of the water supply permit by DEC to expand the program beyond the pilot pro program in the Schoharie Basin. Okay. So currently it's been operating as a pilot program in the Schoharie Basin. At some point, DEC has to provide this written determination saying it should be expanded. And that's supposed to be based on uh, feedback they've gotten from Department of Health, um, DEP, the, town, the municipalities, lo local towns, counties, everyone should have input into that, whether that's expanded or not. And that written determination has not been made up to this point. So I think that is an opportunity for us to 
to express our concerns and hopefully uh, influence that somehow. So it's a, it's a serious issue and we have to move quickly, I think. And so we have an opportunity right now. And so I guess the, the, our call to action uh, for all of you is to contact your town supervisor, make sure that your town supervisor understands the issue that's involved here, uh, talk with your town supervisor about the Coalition of Watershed Town representation here in Delaware County, how in, frankly inadequate, is that a fair statement? That's being kind, huh? Um, inadequate that it's, that it's been to date regarding particularly this, this issue and contact our state senators and, and assembly representatives and make sure that they are aware of what's happening. And perhaps with enough, with enough voices, this could be ended. Fair? And, and, and remember in earlier conversations, we talked about the fact that during the original negotiation, New York City has set a goal of controlling 30% of the land in the in Delaware County. It's already there. They're at 28% now. They're, they're, they're there. Um, and I submit that enough's enough, and it's time to stop this, this craziness and uh, live within what the projections were years ago. Well, gentlemen, thank you. And this won't be the last time that I'm going to, that you'll be on Delco 360 Local Matters to talk about this issue. I have a feeling this is something that's going to continue for, for a little while at least. And you can all be sure that we'll keep you involved um, in, in this issue and keep you informed as to what's happening. Contact your elected officials and tell them you object to this program.